Lord, as your scriptures are read and proclaimed this day, we ask that by the power of your Holy Spirit, that our hearts, our minds, and our very lives may be transformed by your holy scripture. Thank you for your gift of your word. Amen. You know, when you're a pastor, there are a few things you expect to do. One of them is you expect to have to work on Sunday mornings. You laugh, but it's actually in the job description. (laughs) You expect that you'll do a few weddings. And you know that you'll do quite a few funerals. I've done a number of funerals in my time, some big, others small. I've done funerals by gravesides and blowing blizzard-like conditions, to funerals and churches and my own church that I was serving, other people's churches, funeral homes. I've seen a lot of things. For instance, I went to a, or I I was part of a funeral where the guest of honor got lost on the way to the cemetery. That's hard to do. But the, uh, it it was a little cemetery out in the middle of nowhere, uh, out in the middle of the country, and the little escort guy on the the motorcycle, I always call them kamikazes because they scare me to death, boy, they just... Well, he didn't know where he was going, and he missed a turn, and the hearse is following him. And unfortunately, the uh, uh, husband of the deceased knew where he was going, and he jammed on his brakes, stopped everyone, and led, led all of us into the graveyard or, or into the cemetery. And then we had to wait for uh, the hearse to, to eventually show up with the uh, um, um, person of the hour. So um, that was fun. I've had funerals where people have asked me to take pictures in front of the, the uh, or, or pictures with the deceased. I've done all kinds of funerals, but one funeral that I have never done is where the person who was the guest of honor got up and walked away. <laughs> and I kind of thank the Lord for that because I think I probably would just, that would be the end of me. But that's what happens in our gospel reading this morning. It comes to us from the gospel of John. And only the gospel of John has this story in it. And I I love this story for many, many reasons. For one, I love these personal stories of Jesus. Because it really brings home the humanity of Jesus. When we learn that Jesus had three close friends. They were siblings. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And they lived just outside of Jerusalem in a little town called Bethany. And one day, Lazarus gets sick. And his sisters call for Jesus. They say, Jesus, come right away. Lazarus is sick. Because they knew that Jesus could do something about it. They've seen Jesus. They'd seen Jesus heal the sick. And so they call for Jesus, but Jesus doesn't come right away. He waits a couple of days. And by the time he arrives in Bethany with the disciples, it's too late. Lazarus is dead. Mary goes up to Jesus, and she says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. 
I mean, that's a pretty strong statement to make, isn't it? Jesus, if you had come when I called you, my brother would still be alive. And what this reminds me is that sometimes we feel the same as Mary when tragedy strikes, don't we? When our loved one is diagnosed with cancer, we sometimes shout to the sky, Jesus, why didn't you do something about this? Or our loved one suddenly passes away from a heart attack. We say, Jesus, why did you allow this to happen? Where were you? I counted on you, and you weren't here. What this verse tells me is that when we do that, we are in good company. Remember when I was in seminary, I had a a Bible professor tell us this. When we blame God for the tragedies of this world, when we cry out to God, when our heart is breaking, it's okay because God can handle it. Jesus can handle it. See, Jesus wasn't offended. Jesus didn't go, "Uh, Mary, you need to take a couple steps back. (laughs) Or... Mary, you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Mm -hmm. I pay attention to memes on social media. Yes, I do. But Jesus didn't say that, did he? What did he do? He cried. He wept. He wept with his friends, Mary and Martha, and he told them it was okay. It was okay to grieve the loss of Lazarus. It was okay to feel the emotions that they were feeling. It was okay to shout out and to blame him. Because he knew it was part of the process. And he also knew that this was going to serve as an opportunity for everyone to see the glory of God. After Jesus had wept over the death of Lazarus, he prays and he says, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, But I said this for the benefit of the people standing right here, that they may believe that you sent me. And then he brings them all to the tomb where Lazarus had been for several days. And he orders that the big stone in front of that tomb be picked up and and, and rolled away. And I love the answer he gets. Uh, Jesus, I I don't think that's such a good idea. He's been in there a couple of days, and it's going to stink. And Jesus, I'm sure he chuckled to himself, because he knew, but everyone else didn't. And that's this. With God, anything is possible. And our expectations of what is possible are often blown right out the window. And so they roll that stone back, and Jesus, he orders Lazarus to come out. And Lazarus does. He comes out and he's still wrapped in the burial cloths and he, he, he shouts to those around him, quickly go and untie him and let him go. See, Jesus called forth Lazarus and freed him from all of those things that were binding him, from those cloths 
to death. And what this story, I think, is meant to tell us is that there is nothing in this world that can bind us that Jesus can't break. Nothing in the world can bind us. And there's all kinds of things that bind us up in this world. Things such as fear. Things such as addiction. Things such as grief. Things such as hatred. An unforgiving heart. The list can go on and on. Even death. But no matter what it is that's binding us, Jesus can break it if we only believe. Jesus can unbind us from anything that is robbing us of the gift of hope. My friends, leave here today knowing that with Jesus there is hope. There is hope for a new beginning. There is hope for mended hearts. There is hope for forgiveness, for peace, for purpose. With Jesus, there is hope. With Jesus. Hope becomes a matter of life. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. And as we remember those who have left us this year, we ask for your hope to surround each person here today, and especially to surround those who are grieving the recent loss of a loved one. Bring us hope in its many forms, we pray. Amen.